Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the table. What we're going to do is take a look inside the Reaper Bones uh, corset. This is number four. And we were looking at the back of the box and we thought this was kind of neat. Kind of forgot, not that we didn't forget that we ordered this, but forgot how long ago. It really does take them about two years. So this was funded back in August of 2017. And we are July. And I know some people have got this. I think some people might still be waiting. But we got our core set. And I just wanted to show you what was in here because sometimes people like to see what's coming out. Because my understanding is that um, a lot of these pieces in the core set will eventually be sold individually through Reaper and you can buy them, um, you know, packaged with the, the cardboard and the blister and all that stuff. So if you're curious what comes in a core set, I like to show this off because when they do, I'm sure they're going to do a five, then this might encourage you to like, you know, it's a good, good, uh, I think a good bargain. And I think when we did this, it was like $100, $100 on the Kickstarter, which I used to think was horribly expensive for Kickstarters, but a lot of things are 100 bucks. Ultimately, I think the value is really, really good. And there's a lot in here. So let's open it up. I had a pair of scissors because it's got a lot of blisters. So what I'm going to do is actually move the box off to the side and kind of pull these blisters out. And then what we'll do as I readjust the lighting is I will zoom the camera in. And that way you, you can get a really good look at some of these here miniatures. Let's zoom in now. As I cut these out, we can kind of look at each one. All right. Now, I don't have specific names for these things. So as I pull them out, what we'll do is kind of look. And I'm going to take them out of the plastic simply because that will get rid of some of the glare, I think. and might make it easier to see what these are. Now, if I was really doing my job, I would put these together too. So what do we have here? This looks great, kind of like a knight. So here's the body here. Uh, this will take, um, this is actually pretty good. I'll have to spend just a little bit of time with the hot water. You, where you take like hot water, that will let you, it like doesn't quite melt the plastic, but it makes the plastic malleable. And then you can, once you reshape the item how you want, because that will let me straighten the blade out a little bit, and then you dip it in cold water and that will set this back. This is a very um, flimsy, I don't know, flimsy is not the right word. It's good, it's just it's a very, uh, I don't know, malleable might be the word. So I'm not quite sure how you rate plastic with miniatures, but it is kind of flexible. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining about that at all, it's good, it has some bend and give which I think is nice because if it to me if it was too hard of plastic then that's when things things can break so this looks like a Spartan helmet now I don't like I said I don't know if these were Spartan type warriors supposed to be because he's got like full plate armor but I think that looks really cool and then you can see really good detail on the Spartan helmet <clears throat> here's a guy just floating out here and I'm trying to see myself I don't I can't tell, I don't think that's a skeleton. The face kind of looked like a skeleton, but it, oh, you can't see. There you go, zoom. But I like the shield work. And I was trying to look under the helmet there. That might just be his face. Uh, you know, once you paint these, it's easier to see what they are. But I think that's pretty good. Got a warrior with his sword. There's some detailing on the back. Pouch, so there you go. take a peek in here and this is another one of those knights well I say another one of those but it's another warrior figure not too bad at all and again just a little bit of that hot water to shape the axe get it straight the way you want so he's got a separate head uh, that's actually got the face plate is closed see if you can tell and he's got two arms to attach so I've got some glue I'll be able to build these here's a wizard floating around oh I like that that is a nice looking wizard that is really good 
with a owl. Nice. Oh, this is great. This came just in time. Not only is this going to go into our collection of stuff that is going to be unpainted for a while, but we just rolled up some characters for a Warhammer role-playing game, so we might find some stuff we can use. Here's another wizard. I really like these. These are great. And he's got a hand with an orb and then another arm separate. And again, really nice sculpting on the cloak, little skull there. So that's nice. And since they all come, all the pieces come on one sprue, I don't mind pulling them out of the bag like this. So just a little bit of assembly. And we'll have a figure. Okay, this is a gotta be a dwarven warrior. She has a separate shield. She's got her axe hand. That looks nice. And just looking, there's not too many mold lines either. So these will be really easy to clean up. Just assemble, clean up, give them a spray down with some kind of primer. They'll be good to go. Here's a single casting. That looks great. He's holding something out of his, some sort of bottle, misty liquid smoke junk rising up out of it, I'm assuming. He's got his staff. Yeah, that looks nice. Again, let me see if these are labeled on the bottom. No, it just says Reaper Minis. So they don't have specific names, so I can't tell you if that's from a series. I mean, obviously it's a wizard. Oh, that's a Gandalf for sure. Long beard. He's got a sword and a staff. And then here's another single piece warrior. Very cool. Nice shield. And it might be hard to tell on the camera some of the details, but uh, there are a lot of, like, folds in the clothing, armor etchings, shoulder piece, the sword, and some work on the shield. Yeah, these are great. I think now that I've opened this up and I see there's a lot of stuff, if I was to go and dig out the other Reapers, I think if I was going to have like a fantasy war game, I'd probably have enough to put some factions together. Uh, let's see here. Now this wizard does come in several pieces. The head is here. That's kind of the back. Oh, there's his face a little bit. Then he's got a separate staff. So at least the ones I'm going to have to assemble, there's not that many pieces to them. So that's fine. There's another wizard. I should go through these a little quicker, otherwise we'll be here forever. Uh, there's another wizard. So I have a lot of unbagged wizards. I don't know if a bag busted open or they just got thrown in later. And then here is a barbarian. There's a nice Conan the Barbarian right there. Got a lot of fur, little lion head thing on his waist. His cloak, yeah, fur boots. Really nice on the sculpting there too. All right, let's find out. I got a few more loose ones here floating around. Loose inside a bigger bag, so I guess they were bad. Oh, probably because they aren't uh, multiple pieces, so they're just single. But look at that guy. A warrior with an axe. He's got a dagger on the back, a little pouch, a horn. So that's very cool. Again, just need to uh, straighten out his spear. Well, pole arm. Oh, well, no, this came in pieces too, but there's a, a warrior lady there. Nice. Two, looks like um, her weapon and another sword there is on a separate piece. Not too shabby. Yeah, we'll have to see how that looks put together. And then what do we got here? She's got a, a whip weapon, uh, if you can see that. Yeah, because that's coming off her hand. I was going to say... I can't tell, yeah, so she, she has a bow and a sword on her back, and then she has a whip weapon up there on front. Very cool. All right. Come here, you. Need better scissors for this plastic here. Oh, I'm trying to... Okay, that's the front. So we got another female warrior here, which is really good. Nice and clothed. I know sometimes that's... I read that a lot. People like, you know, if you're going to have a female warrior, dress them appropriately like the guy. So they got, you know, 
head to toe in armor and so far all of these have been that way and they look really good too nice facial it's probably hard to see on the camera the face but it does look pretty good up close and then she has a separate shield and separate arm with sword so that one's going to be in three pieces but again that looks really nice and the back is pretty good detail too with some dagger off the belt so that's nice what do we have here so this is why I need an assistant someone off camera who can cut all this stuff open and I can just show these to you maybe what I should do is pause the camera I'll cut them all open and then I'll just show you the plastic so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you this one here. I'll pause the camera, open these all up, and then I can just show you. So you have an idea. They all come wrapped in plastic, so very, very good. Even if they're floating loose, they're still floating loose inside of a very big bag. So there's no pieces just floating around inside your box. Probably uh, a halfling warrior that we've got here. And then looks like uh, one arm piece is holding a nice intricate helmet right there. And then another with a sword arm and a little shield. Or I'll have to figure out where the helmet goes. Maybe it sits on the back or something like that. There it is. Helmet. So halfling warrior. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is now that you have an idea that they all come wrapped in plastic, I'm going to cut these open. That way I can just show them to you. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, welcome back. That was quick for you. Uh, it took me a while to cut all these out. There is... There's a lot here. Easily a couple hundred figures to kind of look through. So we'll just kind of go through. I uh, put out some blue cloth. That way the gray figures hopefully stand out better against the blue than the gray tabletop. But we've got, it looks like maybe three orcs or goblins here. There's the fronts. And there's the back sides of them. You know, pretty good. Again, got the occasional bent sword. However, I think sometimes with like goblins, orcs, even if it's bent, one could almost one could almost argue that it looks good that way because you know they're not the best weaponers. But again, this gives me enough that I could start putting together you know factions of troops. Uh, yeah, a little bent spear might not work. But again, the fronts, backs, all really good, and they come out pretty good for mostly a a single piece sculpt. I've got a few here that are multi pieces that we'll take a look at. But it looks like so far that's like nine of the same type of orc goblin there. Which is fine because these are usually the fodder for your adventures. Just lay them out. Let them get stabbed up. So I'm just grabbing randomly here. I got like a huge pile of, of figures here. So I'm just grabbing from the pile so we can take a look at the bits and pieces. So it looks like a, you know, probably a, a dude, male elf there, shield. You can see nice intricate design work on the shield, sword arm. Again, I like all the folds on the on the cloaks and the clothing. So they look really nice, even before you put them together. There's a few that I put together simply because they were kind of loose in the bag. Yeah, there's some civilians here. So here's your happy friar or village lady. I don't know, maybe the peasant lady, but he looks like a monk. He's got kind of that monk haircut there. Oh, the camera's even trying to pick out his face. That's how well sculpted it is. It's even picking up the face here. Then again, the back side. Good on the cloaks. Yeah, this is probably maybe going through a little quickly. But again, there's a lot to get through. I like the, the whip there. All right. Now, some of these miniatures, like we mentioned, are going to come in... Uh, several pieces. So you've got like this one here. You've got the arm and a whip over here, and then the main body, and then you have, you know, the backside, and all the details. That's two pieces. What I have, though, I'll show you is this one. I've been assembling these as I come across them, but just to give you an idea, uh, this is probably the more. Actually, this is like the most complicated one I have found so far. And I'll just show you that it does come, this has got one, two, three, four, five pieces. And I just dry fit, fitted it a little bit. It's not too bad. I got some glue here. This isn't probably the best glue to use. It's just something I got from the dollar store, so don't, don't be mad. But I'm just going to put a dab. Once this stuff dries, it, it dries pretty good. And 
you just match up sockets and whatnot. So probably the advice you'll get from a lot of folks is just kind of dry fit first, just to get an idea of how pieces are supposed to go. This one here, I'm trying to remember here, elbows go towards the back. And again, just making sure I remember how it goes together, not too shabby. And then I'll just stick a little glue. And these are mostly what I'm going to assemble off, off camera. So you're not going to watch me do all of these. And I probably put too much glue on him initially. I'm just going to stick that there. Yeah, missed, missed the connector points a little bit. And I'm just going to hold that now. Yeah, sorry if I missed it on the camera, but it's hard to watch what I'm doing here. There we go. I had to just rotate them a little bit. I'm going to hold that for a second. So we've got the head, the two arms. Now I'm going to hold this glue in place for a little bit just to make sure it kind of prevents some of the gaps at the shoulder which this one here just got to rotate a little bit I'm going to hold it count to 10 probably need to hold it a lot longer than that I'm not going to hold it the entire time on camera just because that will be even more boring but while we're waiting for that to dry a little bit there's some details on that guy whatever he may be uh, some sort of demon he's got wings too and looks like he's going to have a little bit of a curved tail now the wings are going to help cover up this gap on the back here with his shoulder now, if I had much, much better glue, it might not be an issue, especially quick drying glue. I could just hold it in place for a little bit, let go, and have it be fine. Uh, but once this dries, the glue itself fills some gaps. And then once you paint it, a lot of times you won't even notice the gap. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to go and be happy with that. So I'm going to put a little bit here on the tail. And again, not too much glue because once you put these little pieces in, sometimes that glue really starts to mush out. So I've got the tail here turned to the side just a little bit. So he's got the tail. And then put a little bit for the wings. And again, just enough to try and hold it in place, but not enough to just mush all over. Perfect. Perfect. And got the head, arms. Well, there you go. Voila. So we have this really cool winged guy. So even though they might come in a few pieces, they go together really, really nice. And then if you bump it too much, the tail comes out. There we go. Just trying to be somewhat gentle. There we go. And then once that dries, once this particular glue I'm using dries, it fits really, really well. So I'm going to set him off to dry. All right, since I got the camera running, we're going to show some more items on, on the sprues. And let's see if I can just zoom in a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Again, we got some more of our orc buddies, which we've already seen, so they don't need too much time on camera. Ooh, here's one. This There was a, a town set, like peasants and whatnot, and so I'm guessing here's one of the innkeeper ladies the village folks there she's got a rolling pin a torch uh, nice little apron bonnet that she's wearing a little bit in the back side and she's got again I like the the folds and everything the clothing a lot of this is really really good the details maybe just here on camera don't pop out a whole lot but I think really honestly once you paint them up they're gonna look great here's one of the giant slash troll looking people uh, I think some of these were giants, but there's only so giant they can be, you know, be and keep the price down. But he comes in one piece, so you'd have to, you know, trim in a couple spots. He's going to be three pieces all together, but he comes on a single sprue. So there's a giant. Oh, here's the back side. These aren't too bad. Uh, the sculpts are really good. He's got a skull. It looks like a cyclops skull. No, it's just a skull. I was looking here. He's got a skull on the belt. Got a rock, boulder, so he's nice. Then we have a few 
dungeon sculpt type of decorative items. I guess if you had fence poles, posts, I'm not sure what you use. I think these are supposed to be like crystal ball, scrying balls, or something like that you could use them for. So you get some of those. All right, here comes another one of the ape warriors. These have turned out to look really good so far. And he comes in three pieces. So again, the head, body, and just a separate arm. But most of it's already just sculpted in one piece. And they do a really good job on the fur. You can tell he's definitely got monkey hair, gorilla hair, and then some armor. So he looks great. As a matter of fact, I have here glued together. I think this here was just the head that needed to go on. I'm not... I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was just the head. But again, really good here if you need your Tarzan type of creatures to encounter, your jungle type stuff. Here's one of the other gorillas. Now, there is a bit of a gap here in the shoulder. So again, that'd be either uh, putty fill or just do a better gluing and holding job than I did. There's another one of the great apes. Here I see this is two stuck together. Oh, nice. This will be fun to build. So this is probably a Medusa type of person. A, a snake warrior looks more like... I was looking to see if it's got Medusa head, but no, it's like a snake warrior. There's the coiled body of the snake, the head. Well, I guess this would be the bottom part of the body, then the upper body, a shield. A nice serrated sword. And I was going to say armor, but it could be snake scale slash armor. But I think those look pretty good. And here is a minotaur. A female minotaur. That looks really nice as well. Two-handed axe, got a sword. Again, just really good levels of detail. I know there are some models out there that folks would say get better detail, but for the Reaper Bone line, these are actually looking really good. And again, once you prime them, that detail really starts to stand out. Okay, we had this earlier. Oh, here's a... I wonder if that's... Uh, do I have a person? My first thought was... Well, that's probably a person here. Let's try to get a good height comparison. I was thinking like a, a two-handed axe dwarf was my first thought. He's got a horn, or this could be a viking, but he's got a separate base right there, his horn, and then he's got himself, him, in the back. Well, this gentleman has something that, I guess the horn, okay, there's the slot for the horn, and that's going to go right there, so he'll have the horn across his back, alright, good. Then we had this individual here, kind of looks, a, uh, I want to say like a Middle Eastern deserty type of character, but I thought he looked pretty good too. And then he's got no attachments, but you can see where he's got the two sheaths there for his curved daggers. And then he's got a sword, uh, no that's just a, f f first I thought that was like a scabbard for a sword, it just looks like it's part of a, his belt there. So I like that look. Here we got some more snake people. Yeah, several, which is great, because I think these look good. I think these are worth the time. Again, the lower body, upper body of the snake person, nice two-handed pole arm, and then the head. It gives me ideas for adventures already. Oh, good. And then we have an archer, snake warrior. Again, lower body, head, quiver. He's got his hand reaching in to get arrows. And then the upper body with a little bit of like cloth banded armor and then the bow and the back side. Again, the scale looks great. It might be hard to tell on camera, but the scale that he has on the body is really good. So those, I think, turned out good. Mmm. Alright. This is kind of big, but we'll show you part. I'm not quite sure what he would be. I'm thinking like a Chaos Warrior type of thing. Uh, but there's the bulk of the body. He's got the big skull and little skull accoutrements there dangling off of him. He has a nice rocky type of base that he can stand on. And then he's got his cruel evil shield. And then his Chaos type warrior helmet and a nice fancy sword there. That's a really, really good sculpt as well.
and I like the again all the kind of wolf pelty type stuff and the flowing cloak so this really nice oh look at this I love it <laughs> no village would be complete without a nice little piggy to help them walk through walk through town so that's great pig piggy piggy here we have a lot of little gargoyles. I was looking at the detail, and those are pretty nice too. Again, little dungeon accoutrements there. In the back side, you can see the back of the wings, but that's what, six of them right there. Hello, town beggar. You can tell right away. Got his little walking stick, his little bowl for alms, long beard, kind of bald on top. And the clothes look kind of raggedy. And then on the back, you know, he's got his tattered cloak that's been sewn together. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks really cool. Some stitching there to hold it together. So you got your town beggar or victim, however you play your game. Uh, my first thought on this is a female dwarf. It just says Reaper. I, w I wish these had names, but I guess they're whatever you want them to be. But it kind of reminded me of like a female dwarven cleric type of get up there. Got her hammer. Uh, there's her synth, synth, what do they call it? Little pot that they hold on a, a chain cincher or something like that. Uh, I was trying to figure this out. I think. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out what this was for a second, but she's got her little le lizard gecko type companion with her. So that's pretty cute. And awesome. More snake people. So here we have like a wizard. And I guess that's a female snake lady. But she's got... I, I, I saw one of these. It looked like the bands. But uh, I know on the bottom of snakes they got like... It just looks like the bottom of a snake there. She's got a, a ball of fire she's about to cast at you. And there's the body. So these snake people have turned out really, really good. I like them a lot. And then we have here, probably a human thief of some sort. He's got some leather armor. I like the, his cloak. He's got a sword dagger. This one has some pretty good standout details, for sure. I like that. He's got the peasant type top there. Very cool. Dagger on his boot. So I like that one. Okay, here's a witch. Oh, right. Yep, there's a traditional type of witch-looking lady. So she's got her... I That, to me, looks like a torch, but probably a staff with a power crystal on the end that you could paint it that way. There's the traditional... I, I don't know how traditional that is, but that's what I think of like with uh, Halloween witches. However, that being said, it looks like it's set up to be... Uh, attached here at the shoulder I'm just looking I'd have to definitely dry fit this one but it looks like for some reason oh nope nope sorry I found a spot here it's gonna be dangling at her side so she'll be holding her hat down by her side and then her other arm will be holding up her her uh, scepter staff wand item and she's got long flowing hair that's probably the skinniest one I've seen here of all the models. This one, looking for the head. I'm rotating it around. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what to make of this one. I don't think it's a lizard person, but it's probably cobaldy or something. Got the spear, a shield, and then the body there. So I guess whatever you need that to be. And what is this? More snake people. I'm probably pretty much out of snake people. There might be a couple more. But again, these have all looked really, really good. So the, the bottom of the body, the upper portion, head, shield. Nice detail work on, on the body. The scales are just fantastic. What else? Some more dungeon decorative elements there. Some more of your... Some kind of scrying devices. Uh, it almost initially looks to me like an egg from Alien. So you could say it's an egg on a pedestal, dragon egg, or whatever you want that to be. But again, more decorations for your dungeon. 
which I did use one the other day. I've got, uh, if I didn't hide it away too hard to find, there's a nice, I'll show you this one. This is definitely an altar of some kind, but they had a, a, another one that was definitely like a sarcophagus looking thing. So I thought that's great. I like little things to decorate the tombs and the dungeons and whatnot. So here's a table. So I'll toss that in here. It also came with a couple of books. So if you need big books, these are rather big, but that's awesome. So nice grimoires with decent decorations on the covers. So I'm absolutely loving that. I almost want to go and just do a separate search on Reaper for dungeon decorations because we, like I said, after you get a couple of these uh, Reaper boxes, if you go for them in the future or you have them already, you have a pretty good selection of figures to play with. So at some point you just need to start decorating your dungeons that you have. Even if you're using a paper map, it helps to make things really pop if you can put like those altars and whatnot. It's very cool. Uh, but here we have another, it's just a helmet, and then the body of the warrior, their shield, and a weapon. Uh, normally when I see that, I just assume it's probably some kind of human warrior. But again, you've got shields and weapons, and then here is a, well, my first thought would be golem, but this is a ghoul-looking type of character, a nice ghoul, undead-looking guy, holding a skull head goes right in there so that's a nice looking figure as well and again just as a reminder in case you're thinking wow why are you going through these so fast uh, pause if you want to look at something but because there's so many I just want to give a few seconds to each one sword in hand very small head some of these uh, definitely has kind of a goblin or well, more of a goblin looking head that I would imagine and then the armored back, that looks very nice. I love the armor on this one. That is a nice armored looking goblin. Probably uh, a leader of some sort. Uh, depends on your lore, maybe an armored hobgoblin, but I'd imagine them be a little bigger. Here we've got another, this is a small minotaur, I would say, but there's the head or a small demon, possibly. There's the, the goatish type legs that he's standing on and then the body right there. So this one here has got three pieces. But again, I like the muscle detail. So even even though this plastic isn't that hard plastic, it's actually giving some really good details on things. Here's another female warrior of some sort, just because it's got a super skinny body and whatnot. Uh, and then the kind of the high heel boots. Probably a human, judging by the, the face. Just a guess. And then a scimitar of some sort. I guess this armor looks more like a banded or a scale mail or some kind of leather. But I do like the look of this one. Okay. Whoa, just dropped you on the floor. Let me grab that one here. And picked up with my foot. Not to gross anybody out. Oh, good. More dungeon stuff. Oh, yes. Always needing flame and lighting devices. So paint those up little flame effect and you've got yourself some uh, braziers, braziers, however you say, whichever one it is. I always get them backwards. My wife gets mad. They're not bras. Oh, I forget which one it is. And then we've got a warrior. That's just the back, but there's the helmet, fully enclosed helmet. So it could be anything you want. It's got an arm. Then a, the arm, hand holding the weapon combo, and then the body. Not much on the body, but he's got chain mail underneath. He's got his breastplate, nice armored shoulder pads, sword on the back. So nice typical warrior for you. What have we here? This is a witch for sure. So we've got her feet there, the witch body right there, and then her arm. And it's got the her cloak dangling from the arm a little bit right there. And she's got her walking stick. So this is a really nice looking one. I could have used a witch this weekend when we played. Okay, who are you? Uh, got a human head there. Might be hard to see the head. And, oh, a deck of cards. So here you go. Th oh, perfect. This would be a good thief type character. I like that a lot. The deck of cards is a nice touch. 
a gambler type character, drink, uh, and then of course a little spot to fill out the rest of his scarf. So that's that's pretty cool. Excellent. And what have we got here? Yeah, there were some of these. What are the the chibis? I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is, but it's got the oversized, cute looking head, itty bitty body, a weapon, and then a base for her to stand on. I'm going to have to assemble some of these just so I can see what they look like. I've got some that need to be put together, so I'll probably put those together and show it. Here's a crab, very creepy looking crab, but it's got, looks like a, a carapace, back armor carapace, then claws, and then the body, so especially creepy. And then of course, you know, a nice little stand for it to be on. Great, who doesn't need those? But if you're gonna have that, you gotta have an alligator. That's a really, really good sculpt. The scales, everything stands out on that. Very nice, very sharp and crisp. Paint that sucker up and he's gonna look really, really good. So that's a nice crocodile alligator. And this is nice. Oh, I like this guy. I guess that is a nice big, I'm not saying to say or ogre, but maybe a, just a big orc. I love that huge shield that he has. And on the inside, you can see wood. So it's got a wood on the inside and then banded, and it's got a metal on the outside. So that's a very cool. You can clearly see the scale part here, and then the plate that he's wearing on the body, around the neck, shoulders, and a nice good bent sword that I gotta fix. But overall, really good looking sculpt. Who do we have here? Hey, more serving people. Gotta have folks, if you're gonna run your adventure starting at a tavern, you gotta have people that bring the food. So that's a nice one. Got her hair done up in a bun, nice looking dress, and food items right there on the tray. Fantastic. Ooh, I see more, more, what? Uh, okay. So I've got hidden away somewhere. Uh-oh, I can, I tried to separate all the stuff that came in little, in a piece that need to be assembled, looks like I missed one, so I'm not sure, I've got a whole bunch of arms here, I'm going to have to find owners for those, but looks like this is one set, so we have the, a nice scaled tail, we have the lizard head, Ixar looking head, or, uh, oh, what are they, a dragonborn, possibly, He's got plate armor of some sort, looks very good. Uh, mail on the side, or that's just his skin. Elbow pad, and then a, there's a spot for the tail right there, and then his wings. The wings look like I'm gonna have to cut those from the sprue and then attach the wings individually. So I'm gonna set him off to the side, 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 so I can glue him together. Here we have another, let me look here. Probably a, a goblin, orc maybe, and a body there with his plate armor, his curved scimitar. He's got two, maybe like two daggers. What have we here? Oh, a couple kobolds. A couple kobolds just waiting to come off. Uh, single sculpts. Again, I gotta fix some of the bent weaponry, but again, that's just a dunk in some hot water, kind of strain it out where you want, and then set it in cold water. Should be fine. Ah, oh, I did find one more snake person. So again, with the body, head, and the main body, I guess upper body, lower body. So that's fantastic. So good looking. I love all the details they've put into the armor. So I think these will be very, very fun to encounter at some point. Here we've got a warrior barbarian female, possibly. So she's got looks like her hide armor of some sort, leather armor, and she's got a nice wolf cloak with a sword there on the back, so that would go to the back. Otherwise, it is a single sculpt. This does have the sword arm attached to the sword kind of dangling by her side, so that's going to look good put together. Okay, another goblin orc looking guy, kind of hunched over two daggers, so he's going to come sneaking up on folks. A 
Short people, now we got a halfling or two. That looks really good. I don't know if we can really bring that up to the camera much without losing a whole lot of... But yeah, I like that. Little halfling type, maybe a wizard possibly you could run that as. I feel like I'm making a dent now. Uh, there's a few we'll have to assemble. Here we've got Frankenstein. That does look like Frankenstein. Got a nice jacket, chain, or a vampire, or an undead. I see him stitched up, so either a very fancy zombie or it's Frankenstein. I think it's supposed to be more like a Frankenstein. The square type of flat head makes me think Frankenstein. But that looks really good, standing on his rock. Base has got a good jacket. So there's your Frankenstein monster. Here we've got a nice fat orc going on. I think orc. I try to think, you know, the differences. Maybe it's just a very fat goblin, but he's got his plate armor. He's barking out commands. He's got a really wicked looking axe. Some, again, I still say, like, when it comes to orcs and goblins, they probably don't care if the axe is bent or warped. They're going to use it anyway because they just assemble stuff as they can. So that even kind of looks more wicked in his hands when it's kind of bent like that. Oh, here's a big one. Not that big, but this has got several pieces. So here we've got two wings that I'm going to have to attach separately. And then here's the body. So I'm not quite sure what type of wing demoness type that is. Uh, oh, that's an X-rated one. So let's cover that part up. There's her tail, her arm, other arm with attached weapon, which we'll have to give that the old hot water treatment versus the cold shower treatment. Mm, here we go. Oh, here we go. We got a nice, happy friar type of guy. He's got his scrolls. He's got his quill. He's got glasses, a nice, happy jowl in the head, in the face, if you can see that, and his robes. I definitely want to make a character in something and play the nice, happy, fat monk. Got to do it. Then we have here ooh, another minotaur-looking thing here. I'm trying to make out what some of this on the head is. I guess it's blinders, maybe, and his horns. I'm not quite sure. There's his upper body. This is like a small minotaur, more of a goat person, I suppose. And then there's his body, or the legs at least. Uh, oh, look at that. Again, another gnome, possibly halfling. Looks really nice. I like the little fez type hat, his little walking stick. Definitely gives me the vibes of some kind of sorcerer, magician. Could be a cleric. Flip him over. He's got the nice Hugh Hefner robes. Very nice. Couple more. Gotta be kobolds. Uh, when they kind of look like the piggish looking dog people, I think that's definitely kobolds. So there's your wizard kobold, or at least he thinks he's a wizard. Some kind of shaman. Probably still can't read, holding up a blank scroll, but nobody knows. But definitely adorable. Adorable! As they're stabbing you. Here are more orc goblins. I'm, I'm probably going to say goblins. So we got three goblins here on a sprue. And again, they look really nice. Some good details on the shields. You can see uh, like the rivets, bolts, things like that that are stuck in there to the shield. So those are good. Uh, here we go. A nice female, looks like a female ranger of some sort. I like the bow. Again. Awesome, awesome work on this one. Some of these, I mean, they look good, but every once in a while you grab one and you say, yeah, that is really sharp looking. She's got a lot of pelt type armor on. You can see the bow, or the bow, but you can see the quiver, the arrows, nice kind of the wolvy fur cloak part. And then the big folds here as the wind is blowing her cloak around. Here we have your countess type lady, Aristocat. The nice long kind of off of the arm sleeves there. That's very cool. I'm looking to see probably another ghoul type guy. He's kind of got the, not quite the zombie, but kind of the ghoulish look there. 
the undead muscular body guy works out better than I do. And he's got himself the base on top of a, a grave of some sort or a pile of dead stuff. Very creepy. Got his little loin cloth that's all tattered up. So he's ready to hit the town. Here we have another of the, the miniature Minotaur people. Okay, little head, the body. There's the front of the body, very muscular miniature Minotaur. And there's little legs, and you can see a lot more work on the, the face and head and the back of the upper body. So nice little mini, mini me, mini Minotaur. Here we have a mummy. That's a really good looking mummy. You can see the wrappings on the legs, tattered wrappings on the body. He's screaming. You got the his wrappings, uh, what do you maybe unraveling from off his hands and arms, and it looks like they put little symbols on there. That's like a RR, maybe the sculptor, but a couple things that look like Egyptian writing. You might not be able to see that, but very thematic feel to it. And then we have here another ghoul, a bigger ghoul, nasty looking guy there. There's his screaming head, but he's ready to rip into you. So a very good sculpt on another ghoul. At least the undead look really good, right? Uh, let's see here. We got a small weird looking, uh, that can't be the head, but I'm guessing that's the, yeah, it's a, a very odd looking helmet but there's the head there's the two hands holding his sword and then there's the body some good armor there oh here's another one for your Egyptian collection so that would be the uh, I don't know what they call the the female queens I guess were also pharaohs I think they're all pharaohs but kind of gives that regal feel to it or just a a female cleric priestess of some sort. Again, really good detail on that. I don't think my wife will appreciate having to paint that one. I might have to paint that one. Okay, then we got uh, probably a human. I wouldn't say an orc or anything, but just a very angry looking human with his two-handed axe. Most of these, I guess, take two hands, but a nice double-headed axe at the very least. And on the back he's got a, an extra sword there, some of his adventuring supplies. So he's ready to go off into a dungeon seeking adventure. Here we got stuck together here some more cobalt looking guys. They're ready to go adventuring. They're ready to become experienced pinatas for adventurers. Oh, there's a couple more. Various sizes of your cobalts for you to run into your adventurers, give a little bit of a challenge. And then we've got three more of the goblins, another three goblin set, archer, swordsman, the shields. What have we here? Ooh, uh, I guess a type of owl bear. Got feathers and fur and a stand for him to be on. So I'm, my first thought is that's a type of owl bear. Here's a lone by himself goblin warrior. Be strong, be brave. Be brave goblin warrior. All right, some more goblins, well, kobolds stuck together, little pig dog people. Oh, I love this one, the butcher of the group. Nice and fat. And not sure what that is. Almost, oh, you know what? It's like a mom and dad. Oh, my goodness, how sad. Because there's a baby right next to the daddy. So not to get into the, the politics of Dungeoneering, but a lot of people will complain about their murder hobo adventures. Like, they're just goblins and they're just kobolds. Just go in and that's the whole point. You just slaughter them out. But how can you knowing that they're actually a family? So this little guy has got a little picture of his baby. And when you kill him, the little picture falls out, and it's this little baby holding on to dad. That's, I'm going to keep that out and show my wife. And then here we go, just the normal cobalt you can go in and 
whack those guys. It's holding two axes, he's got an axe. Already developing backstory. Okay, here's another female warrior. That's a really good looking one there. So he's got two swords, plate armor, still covered. Still covered. Uh, the legs, boots, I guess, plate boots. Really good looking. Here's another big headed one. I don't quite under I had to admit I don't quite understand the big headed chibi looking people, but they are kind of adorable though. Oh, this one's a little chibi demon. Because there's the little chibi wings and a little base for it to stand on. And there's the back. So I'm going to have to assemble a couple of these. I'm going to keep these out just so I can build them and show you what they look like because they are kind of adorable. Here's, uh, oh, this was actually several. Yeah, so like I'll have to build this one because if I just throw these in the box, I'll lose what goes where. But you've got a, a miniature Gandalf kind of guy. Put his hat on and he's got this base, his scroll. Yeah, what fun. I think here's a, a foot. And then there's his hand holding his dragon-headed staff. So I'm going to glue him together. Yeah, there's a couple of these. I think I'll, I'll finish putting them together and then bring them on. So of the sets that are ready to look at, though, uh, we're actually running out, believe it or not. It's starting to get low. Okay, so here's another of the, the chibi-headed folks there. There's her itty-bitty body. Her itty-bitty paladin-looking body with plate armor sword, base, fancy shield. So there's her face. Here's a nice warthog, I guess. A nice big boar back, razor back, boar hog kind of thing. Hello. Hakuna Matata to you. Some more of your dungeon decorations, more of your, your crystal balls. Uh, I guess if I was... Oh, no, they're skulls. Oh, how evil. I first flipped over. I thought, wow, more crystal balls. That's great for a crystal ball shop. And then oh, the catacombs come alive. And then we have Bride of Franken... Oh, that looks more like a vampire chick. You can tell by the lack of clothing covering the midsection. So that is a... Vampire queen of some sort there. Looks very good. Nice long gown. Hair done up nice as a vampire lady would have. And then we have here. Oh, nice. The town guardsman. Or executioner or whatever. I think more of a town guard. Nice pole arm there. Pole axe. His horn to sound when there's trouble. Or an adventurer to call his friends near. Little pouch he's carrying. That's a really nice looking one. Then we have here, uh, probably a, an orc of some sort. Uh, the head doesn't look all that human-y, but probably a nice orc, armored up, breastplates. So he's ready to go. His little mace there, go bash people in the head. And then we've got, again, a nice overweight fat kind of goblin looking dude, ready to go make dinner for his goblin clan. Or it's just a really fat goblin warrior with a nice sword. Kind of big for him, but uh, here we go. Uh, probably maybe a thief, assassin type character. I see a little pointy ear sticking out, so maybe an elven assassin. He's got the dagger, got a sword. Or could just be a two-handed weapon ranger out and about. Got some plate armor on, like plate leggings, so hard to say. Or just a two-weapon fighter, maybe. That's nice looking. Ooh, look at that. That is cool. Oh, this, I would have loved to have had that this week. And if I had pulled this out, because my folks, we did uh, Warhammer 4th Edition. They went down into a mausoleum and found some things. But that would have been a cool thing to find. Very cool. Uh, spear, oh, this would have been great. The spirit coming up out of the book kind of a thing. Would have been perfect. Really nice looking statue. Or it's either a statue that you can say is carved that way, or it is maybe a figure rising up out of the, the book that summoned it. So that's very cool. Here you've got your goblin, shaman, wizard looking caster. Uh, 
Okay, this warrior's got a scythe there, so that could be maybe a warlock, but tall, skinny, so probably an elf. Uh, I think there's some pointed ears poking through the, the hair, so yeah, just a nice, skinny warlock for you. Very cool details on the side there, kind of a skull with the protruding beak. I would hate to get jabbed by that. So very nice. Oh, here we go, just some more. We've already seen these, but just, again, more to fill out your little goblin cobalt armies. And a few more. We just looked at that. So again, you got enough to start filling out your fantasy armies. Uh, another warrior here, he's got his fancy helmet in the middle, shield, sword attached to the arm, and then the plate mail body that you have. There's a lot of plate armor on these guys. But again, that's just four pieces to put together. So, you know, not too complicated on the assembly. In fact, I better put the cap on the glue before that completely dries out. Here's another one of your vampires of the night ladies or whatever, but she's got her rest in peace tombstone, um, long flowing gown dress, long hair, whatever you want to make that. I just, whenever I see that style, it makes me think of, uh, what is that, Morticia from the Adams Family, so you're kind of a vampirish -y looking lady. Oh, well, this is a good looking warrior. Again, kind of got the angular facial thing, a little bit of an ear coming out. So again, maybe another elven warrior, two-handed weapon, the base there to stand and get a nice pose on. So that's a really nice looking elf for you. So again, you get a good mixture of stuff, humans, some elves, some halflings, dwarven type stuff, a three-piece orc slash goblin maybe head shield with an arm and then the body and again you know easy to fix the bent weapons but sometimes on the orcs and whatnot i still like it i think it just makes sense that those guys don't know how to make very good weaponry here is another one of our undead well no uh maybe not an undead but definitely a dancer enchantress type person there Prime that up and paint that up in bright, vivid colors. Another one of the mini minotaurs. Little head there. Well, the head is like the biggest thing proportionately, it feels like. But a big head. There's the little body. Little, little leggies. Okay. Promise you, just a couple left. Let's see. All right, now this sultry lady comes in two pieces, so I had to attach the head, got the body and the dress to paint up. The dress is very, very tight. You can see her belly button. Very nice looking sculpt. Yeah, those those have got to be vampires, because here's, uh, what is that, Strahd? So you can do your Barovia D&D session, so you're going to have your vampire. He's got his vampire ladies with him. Very nice looking. This isn't like a really campy looking vampire either. It looks very serious. Uh, definitely reminds me of something out of like the, the Ravenloft. And another peasant person, but someone there to go fetch water or milk or whatever. The milkmaid falling out the top of her dress. Okay, what is this? I did find this. So I've got a couple pieces here to things that definitely belongs to someone I'll have to find. See, I also have here some additional arms for somebody. I guess I'll figure it out as I go along. But I'm going to pause this, assemble some things, and then show you. I do have one item assembled already. This one I'm kind of keeping out because my wife wanted to paint this one right away. She thought this was so cool looking. You got the server lady, but she's also got her demon wings. And she said, yes, that is a character I would love to make. Oh, I wonder if this is a well, she's got keys. For some reason, I thought Jailer, but she's bringing a lot of food and beer. So she just happens to have the keys to the different inn rooms and whatnot. So that's that one. I've got to remember to keep that one out just for my wife. Yeah, and I think that's all of the assembled ones that I have of the kits or the ones to kind of slap together. Here is this, another 
scary looking vampire pole. Uh, I didn't really look at this one yet, but see there's a body. I don't, s the head is like tilted back into the post. And then the drag, or uh, big vampire evil demon wings coming down. Very, very creepy looking. Uh, more bodies kind of intertwirling up into that. Very creepy looking. Ugh. All right, so that's there. Yes, the rest of these I'll have to, well, here's one. I found this one. I knew I had a couple put together, but here's another one. Unless I, sh oh, this is the one I did earlier and it's still dry. Uh, the glue is mostly dry, so he is held together pretty well once the glue has started to dry. And they do look really good assembled. So I'm gonna set him off, let him dry some more. That is all of the pre-assembled, so I'll go ahead and put some things together, and then we'll come back and show you the rest of the assembled pieces. Okay, and through the magic of editing, um, I'm about a day later here finishing up some of the minis, and I've glued them. Most of these are dry. A couple of them are probably maybe shouldn't be played with yet, but I wanted to show you them. Uh, yeah, that zoomed in enough. So this is one that I assembled. Uh, demoness, succubus, whatever you want to call it. We've got wings attached. Very cool mini. Probably one of the the more adult ones they have. I don't know if I showed you these, so let me let me show these real quick. Uh, these were some ghost ones they had, but the the thing is, it's very hard to tell the specific details. But these were all kind of piratey ghost themed ones so they were pretty cool just you've got to really get up there to see it now this this one here has a fencing so maybe not so piratey I don't know it's just really hard to tell I, I mean obviously they're ghosts but uh, a couple of them seemed kind of piratish -y. like there's one here where he's actually got a piratey hat and his piratey scimitar looking sword and a treasure chest, which I think was inspired by uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, where the Flying Dutchman I think is in that one. And then this one here has got a harpoon, part of like a ship mast. I mean, they're they're neat. I just um, trying to think how I'm going to use them because I don't want to paint them. It's just hard to see the detail. Plus, I was wondering if they glow in the dark, which not really. So they don't glow, or maybe they do, and I just got to really charge them up. But then here's another one that definitely seemed piratey, part of like a ship there. He's got a piratey hat as well. So, I mean, it's cool. We got some ghosts, so that was nice. Then we've got this little miniature troll one. I thought this one looked cute. He's got a big jawbone of some creature there as his weapon. He's got his little belly, little outie belly button. And he's got a very unhappy... I was trying to tell, I was couldn't tell if it was a, just a huge underbite, maybe an overbite, but he's just got a lot of mean looking teeth. So that's another cute one. And again, this this uh, was assembled, I'm coming back from assembling these. It was this, if I remember right, uh, this arm, no, I guess the arm was there. It was this arm for sure, and the head. And a leg. So this guy here was about, well, the main body, so about four pieces on that one. This really buff rat looking dude, my goodness, yeah, that guy's got serious, serious roid rage going on there. His tail was glued on, the head was glued on, and both arms were glued on. So that's one, two, three, four, uh, five pieces total for him. But yeah, that's a lot of muscle that you're going to end up painting on that guy. This one I found mixed in amongst all of the models to assemble, miniatures to assemble. This was already done. But I like this one because she's designed in such a way that it looks like she's floating. So I thought that was very cool. So that's a, definitely a mystic type creature for sure. Or person. You know. But I like that one. But I thought I'd show it to you. And this guy here. I was trying to figure out what he was supposed to be because on the back here he's got I don't necessarily want to say scroll tubes but then it looks like banded together broken off I'm not I'm not quite sure 
arrows, scroll tubes, something, and he's got a sword. So I was thinking maybe a bard, and those are scrolls of music or spells or something like that in these tubes. Not entirely sure. I was only thinking like a bardish type guy because he's holding a skull and talking to it. So maybe like Shakespeare, armed for war. And then here's some of the chibis. Uh, there's a couple here. We'll just grab what I got left over. But that's the Gandalf chibi. I thought, I call it a chibi. I really don't know, just the, the munchkin type. I really like it. He's got his dragon staff, which is very cute as well. And this one was the hat, the body attached to the base, then the staff and arm attached, and then he had a separate arm, and then the hand holding the scroll. So not, again, these only are like maybe five pieces you got to glue together. So overall, not complicated builds, but I think they look really nice put together. Uh, this one here might be a little hard to see, but definitely like a, a witch hunched over her bowl. I don't know what that is. Cauldron of something. And it's got a little skull down here at the bottom and a handle like a giant's mug. And it's there to stir things together. And it's not a cloak. Or that's a cloak. It's not wings. And then a little candlestick. So I thought that's kind of neat. Thematic little witch type thing to encounter. And I don't know if you'd want to put this on a bigger base, because the cup, or the whatever you want to call that, mug that she's attached to, or he, it seems okay, pretty sturdy, but if you, you know, bump your table a lot doing stuff, it might fall over, so probably put on a little more sturdy base. This one's good, getting into some of the demons that they had. Again, super muscular, but got wings, got tears in the wings, a wicked curved sword, um, the horns, the mouth, big grinning teeth, tail. So this one was the wings, the tail for sure. Uh, I did put the glue of the body to the base, and I think that arm was good. I, I, I think that was it. I don't think I had to glue the arms on at all. So I think the, the head the body to the base and the, the wings came as one piece and then the tail. So again, maybe like five pieces all together that you have to put together. So not, not horrible. He's drying. And this one here, I might have shown this one already, but since we're here again, um, showing off the assembled one. So this one, the wings, I think was one piece for the wings. Her arm holding the beverages was one piece. And then the arm holding the, the food on the tray above her head was one piece. So that's like one, two, three, so four, four pieces for her. And again, pretty adorable. Then one of the smaller, I don't know, munchkins. And she's uh, like a succubus vampire warrior munchkin. And there's her wings. And the wings were one piece, the head glued on, and then the body to the base. And then we had this gentleman here, another porter guy to carry stuff around town. The, let's see, I know the body glued on. One of the arms I'm pretty sure did, or maybe it was the head. This one I don't quite remember. Oh, the leg. That's what it was. So his body and everything was pretty much one piece, but the leg glued on, and then the, the legs, they had little pegs to glue into the base. So, again, not overly complicated to put together. You know, when I was building these, it felt like there was a lot of pieces I was assembling, but now that I'm looking at them, it's like, well, there really wasn't that many I had to build. There's another one of the demon warriors there. He's got his wings. The wings were one piece. The tail went on. And the arms were one piece, so you had to kind of hold it up in place. wasn't too bad, really. But the body was already attached to the base, so you just had to add on the extra parts. And I think that one looks really cool. I like how he's got the, the shoulder pads and the big leather strap that reaches around and holds, uh, holds it to uh, some kind of maybe body harness. And then that's what the back looks like. Back front and possibly another 
um, Dragonborn Warrior for your games, Paladin or something like that. Now I did have, which I got over somewhere else, I had some of the extra arms that I showed earlier. Or maybe I didn't show them, but I mentioned I had extra arms. So I actually just found two arms that I could cut off, and they seem to fit this guy. So I wasn't expecting that for him. Maybe those arms could be used on some other things. But his little sprue thing itself did not come with the arms. So from the other thing with arms and bucklers, so it had like, you could have had like two daggers or two swords. So I went with a buckler cutlass combo. Not that he represents any character I play, but I just thought that kind of looked cool. And then the wings were individually put on, so they didn't come as one wing. A lot of these, the wings are connected here to like one piece, you just kind of glue it in. But this I had to glue and hold each wing in place for a while, and then you had to glue on the tail. And then his body came attached to the base, and you had to put the head on. So um, actually this is probably the more complicated one, trying to get the wings in and hold the wings in place. But otherwise, this is another good looking mini. And, uh, you know, once you paint him up, I think he'll look wonderful. Can't lay him down very well because of his tail, but there you go. And I think I already showed these, the Ma and Pa Kobolds. They were over here, so I wasn't sure. But I'll just let you look at those real quick. Ma and Pa Kobold with the baby Kobold there attached to Daddy, holding on to Daddy. And I thought I brought them all over here, but I see that I got a couple of miniatures that are left over at the assembly table. I'll go get those in a second. But I do have these two. Not sure, a cockatrice or a wyvern, but some of these bigger ones were a little, little complicated to hold together. The glue I have isn't the best, takes a long time to dry. Once it's dry, it's pretty sturdy, but trying to get these things built while I wait for the glue to dry was kind of a pain. And on this one, particularly, you had the, uh, it was the body, this leg was a, a big piece of it, and this other leg kind of glued into the first leg, and those glued to the body. But the problem is the tail, uh, yeah, like the, the lower body kind of attached to the upper body here, you can see. But the problem is, the way everything lined up, the tail, oh, you can't see, the tail is supposed to glue into this rock. But when you try to fit everything, it was it spread the legs apart and it wouldn't, it didn't look right at all. So fortunately, as this dries, it seems to be holding in place pretty good, that the only points of contact will just be uh, those two feet. Otherwise, I think it's going to hold okay. I think it'll be fine. But this is a, in the way the head looks, it was kind of weird. But uh, it all works out pretty good. All worked out pretty good. But it's uh, definitely crying out to the skies. It's upset about something. So we'll put him there. And then this was a, I guess, a, a hippogriff. I don't know, y'all know these things better than me. A griffin. Maybe a griffin, not a hippogriff. But the wings, wings glued on. And they're holding pretty good, so I'm very happy with the wings. They're not falling all over the place. And the body connected to the rock more appropriately. So it connected there, the middle of the tail, and then right back here is uh, the rest of the tail. So the tail connected in two spots, and then he's got the one leg. And what else did we have to do? We glued the body to the rock. Uh, this arm, I believe, just this arm here had to go on. So overall, he assembled pretty well. I'm happy with that. And then as that glue dries and cures, it'll be a really nice, sturdy sculpture. So let me go grab the other couple minis here. And we have next, this is the two-headed Etten, right? Those are Ettens. He was nice. He was actually not too bad to assemble. He went together really well and held together. So he was comprised of both heads, then the hand holding his axe, hammer. I love, I just, this one was really fun to look at. He definitely has a shield off of a knight that he has somehow maybe done away with. And I really liked, he's got this pig strapped to the back of him and lots of maybe like, um, bags that he's gotten off of horses and other things that he's carrying. I got a big old like rum of 
ale rump something, but a huge barrel of something. And then, you know, some skulls of things that he's done beaten in battle, some uh, little pieces of armor, like uh, this armor here on his knee, if you can see it there, that's actually a helmet. So he's wearing like a knight's helmet to cover his knee. It's very cool. In fact, on his club, it's not an axe, I guess it's more of a hammer, but it's an anvil. So this one was actually just really cool to look at because he's got a lot of little neat surprises, if you will. So I thought he was very, very cool. So there's your two-headed Etten. Really like the look of that one. Okay, then we had a couple more of these mini folks. This is the Paladin. Nice intricate shield with um, like a statue angel type whatever. It's nice. So he was assembled with the arm and shield. That was it. Uh, everything else was fine. The body, uh, maybe the head. No, I don't even think the head. I think this one, all I had to do was glue the arm with shield in place and then glue the body to the base. And then that one was done. I like the flaming sword. Now it's just a matter of painting these and getting like a good flaming sword effect. All right. Yeah, we are just about done. And then we had the other miniature one. This is an, an elven warrior wizard, I guess. It's got a, a sword with some details on it. It's got the staff. This one was the head and the arm with the staff and then the body glued to the base. So just a few pieces on that one. But if you like the little munchkin ones, I think these look really good. And I, they might have more. I mean, obviously the base set came with a certain amount of these munchkins, but they probably have more on their site if you like them. I know there's actually a game. I don't I haven't played it. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I think it's by a company called Soda Pop Miniatures. But I think they do some games that use those, those minis that would look probably really good with that, playing those kind of munchkin figures. Now this is one, this is the work in progress. This is the one I haven't finished put together. It's taking the longest for the glue to dry into place because the pieces don't fit together as nicely as I would like. The head, uh, the head went on not too bad. The head is two pieces. It's this top part here and that glued to the base. Both of the arms are glued in and the leg and this tail and you can see a lot of the seams but that's more of the fact that I'm not used to building these big models and I don't use like putty so yeah they're probably not gonna look very good but that's not Reaper's fault that's just my lack of building miniatures and like this but one thing though is I dry fitted this and I knew that this would be a tight fit between the hand and the leg but to get the hand in and hold it in place means that this hand is actually pushing down on this leg. So this leg isn't snapping up. I don't know if you can see it, but if I try and put the leg all the way back in place, it kind of pushes up on that thumb there a little bit, pushes on that hand. So the hand is actually pushing the leg down into you know a position. It'll dry, it's going to work, and it's going to stand. But the only problem is these feet don't line up so it's flat. I'm zoomed in quite a bit. Let me zoom out just a little bit. It might be easier to see him. Uh, so he doesn't quite stand flat. But I think once I get it kind of built, I, I mean we'll make it work. We'll make it work. It is the largest that comes in the core set. There were some larger dragons that you could get, but this is the one that came in the core set. And I think that would look really nice once you get that painted up. Uh, a lot of this is going to be butchered by my painting skills. I didn't put the wings on only because I got to wait for the body to finish drying. Especially, you know, trying to work around this leg issue where it's being pushed down by the hand. So I think once that's had a good solid 24 hours to dry, then I'll go back and we'll take a look at the wings. But the wings... Let's see here. I dry fit everything. And we'll see. I think it might be this side here. Just a matter of figuring out like what was their interpretation or the, you know, oh there we go. That will stay in place for just a moment. 
who knows, maybe I'll be able to glue that in now because they seem to hold pretty good on their own. Oops. Yeah, I might be able to glue those tonight. Oh, but it makes it so top heavy. He's falling over. So I'm definitely going to have to fiddle around with this one to try and get it to hold the wings and get it to dry appropriately. Yeah, that one just makes them so heavy. All right, so uh, that one, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm going to be working on this dragon for a little while, but that's the only one that is challenging me and my lack of, of assembly skills. Otherwise, this has been a fantastic box. Let's see if I can close this up. I would say if you weren't able to get in on this Kickstarter or if you can buy the core box, let me zoom it out a little bit. If you have an opportunity maybe to pick up the core box, I would say go for it. There is a lot of stuff going on in this box. And then I would say when the next Kickstarter comes around, definitely hop in on that. Uh, their Kickstarters seem to get bigger each time they come out. So it definitely is not a bad idea to hop in while you can. They add a lot of stretch goals. And then they also have a lot of add-on extra purchases you can do as well. I will say this is the public service announcement part. So if you're done looking at miniatures and if you made it this far, I just want to share that um, the public service announcement part is make sure you fill out your pledge manager properly. I did not fill out my pledge manager properly. I thought I had and when I went to look at my pledge manager I saw that my name and my shipping address and everything was there but I didn't confirm that that was for Bones 4. That was actually probably for Bones 3. So I really, really screwed that up. However, this is the part I wanted to share. The customer service at Reaper was fantastic. They made sure that I still got my core and it was my fault. Totally my fault. I made the mistakes, but they took the time to sort it out and get me a box. And they also did this, I didn't even get their name, they just kept coming back with customer service at Reaper. And the person that I was sp uh, speaking to was even on vacation and they were just, you know, checking emails and things while they were on vacation. So uh, big kudos and a big thank you to Reaper. Uh, their customer service was fantastic. And I just wanted to share that. Uh, I'm not encouraging you to make mistakes so you have to interface with them, but I just wanted to give a nice thank you for their generosity in helping me get this sorted out and uh, also just to let y'all know that um, I think that for future Kickstarters definitely is a worthy investment if you didn't get in on this one look for the next one I don't know when the next one will be but we are definitely keeping an eye out for it because that will be if they do a number five here pretty soon I'm hoping this year then that'll be the third of their box sets that we've done Anyway, I think this is going to be, once it's all edited together, super long. So we'll go ahead and shut it down there. Thanks for watching, and we will talk to you later. Bye.